Did I say it right? Yeah, sure. Okunkwo. O- Okunkwo. Yes, Kenneth Okunkwo. Doctor Kenneth Okunkwo. Oh, doctor. Yeah. All right. Do- what? Do- it's a. It's a doctor in. Yeah, doctor of letters. You know, I'm a lawyer and a movie actor. Uh, so tell us where the journey all began. You know, now that you're a lawyer and a movie actor, which one came first? Well, um, I was a movie actor before becoming a lawyer. I actually come from a family of lawyers. I shared the same womb with four other lawyers. You know, so it's quite an elitist family, you know. So, but I started movie quite early in life. I was 24 when I did my first movie, Living in Bondage. And that was the first movie that started in Hollywood. You know, so after that, you know, I, I was a professional before I became an actor. I had graduated from the university. But after being a celebrity, that was when I went back to school again to read law and other multiple you know, degrees. Because my father wouldn't let me rest until I had completed all the academic work he had for me. So. But also, was it hard for you to uh, juggle, because you were a celebrity first, then you went back to school. So was it hard for you, like, would you be in class trying to learn and then, then people would be like, hey, wait a minute, I know you. <laughs> Yeah, it was not hard because, like I told you, I have about five degrees. So I had done some degrees before being a celebrity. So start, you know, the academic life had become part of me. So it's always easy for me to go back to read up other things. You know, the first degree in the university is what matters. If you pass through the university and allow the university to pass through you, it will become permanent and uh, I can always go back to read up any degree the psychology of the school environment is already embedded in me so, yeah. so uh, when did it start for you like when did you realize that you have this acting gift and that you want to actually get into acting oh well you know acting for me is natural so it just started from the time I was born I'm sure it's possible if I had the opportunity it must have started in the womb so it was <laughs> so but it was easy for people to pick it out. So as I was growing up, people were telling me that you are an actor. So it got into me from beginning. So throughout primary school, secondary school, you know, I was acting. But when I got into the university for the first degree, I suspended acting until when I was done because I wanted to be the best student in my faculty and I graduated one of the best. So immediately I finished from my youth service, I went back to the stage and I went back into acting and when the environment saw me, they were like, wow, you are like the guy we've been waiting for. And then they brought out this movie that was very tough to interpret. And by the grace of God, I just gave it the interpretation they were looking for and that was how Nollywood was born. You're now being one of the pioneers and seeing a little bit where it is today. How does it make you feel in terms of the growth that you're experiencing and the worldwide appeal, I would say, of Nollywood? Yeah. Take that again. The, the world, the wild appeal of Nollywood, being one of the pioneers. Yeah. Right now, all across the world, all across Africa, people are talking about Nollywood. They know you people by name, some of them by your characters. How does that make you feel, you know, from being one of the pioneers? You know... I've always said that I will be eternally grateful to God to always be associated to be the first actor that acted the first movie that started in Hollywood. I mean, that's the, that's the best award for me, you know, because it's of historical relevance and importance forever. It makes me feel humble because I believe that it's not because I'm the most qualified. It is just an act of grace. I was at the right time I was at the right place and I was at the right I met with the right people and then that's divine favor and you know when such things work in your favor and you take that opportunity it's for life so I, I, I it makes me humble first and foremost it makes me to be very grateful that God could consider me the guy to do it and then that that's why I love to be cool-headed all the time you know worldwide fame brings alongside it worldwide challenges you you have a lot of uh, 
people that want to follow your footsteps around the world. So you just can't afford to be a bad guy anymore. You know? <laughs> so however you try, you just have to try to be good. Not because you don't want to be yourself, but because other people will be influenced and affected by your conduct. And you wouldn't want to mislead any of your fans that love you. So you just have to be a good guy. So it has really helped me to be more refined and to be more conscious of the fact that I must live not only for myself but for others who are looking up to me to show the light so that they can find their way. And you know, speaking and just listening you speak as well, um, you know, you're very conscious about, like you said, the grace of God and all this. So does religion or Christianity play such a, a big role uh, in your life as well? First of all, let me admit that I'm a Christian. And let me concede that I'm a born-again Christian. But you see, the fear of God is the main foundation. It's that, you know, the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't have it, you must have the tendency to derail as a celebrity. Because there are a lot of beautiful things that will attract you to it. And the superabundance of every performance is detrimental to its performer. You know, so the only thing that can make you to moderate your life, not to allow your life to move into excessiveness, is the fear of God. You know, to the extent that you allow any act or conduct by you to exceed its tolerable level, you are derailing. And the danger is that you are going to derail along with millions of the other younger ones that are looking after you. I can't afford to betray that confidence that is reposed on me. And I must consciously act to carry them along. So there are probably people who are watching who they want either to act or even to, uh, some of them are in school, some of them are lawyers like yourself and they are still pursuing their education. What would be your advice to them, to both groups of people, who, those who are pursuing their education and those who are interested in acting or theatre? You know, both of them are not mutually exclusive. As a matter of fact, both of them should work together. As an actor, I was able to pull that feat off because I was already knowledgeable. The more educated you are, the better actor you will be. Acting in its versatility, it cuts across every world. You know, you need to play an illiterate, you need to play a very educated guy, you need to play a rich guy, you know, a prince, you know, a king. Now, the wealth of knowledge and exposure will make you to be very good in all these things, especially the manner of your interpretation. You know, charisma, you know, is the necessary ingredient that builds a celebrity. And you build this charisma over a while, and education is one of the best weapons. So I've always told people, if you are drunk for real, you cannot play a drunken man very well. You know? So <laughs> you need to be educated to be a better actor. So both of them should go together. What I always advise people when they say they want to be you know, actors and actors, they say, look, have you been, been to school? People will take advantage of you. If you've been to school, you'll be a better actor. Before now, people have always thought that uh, if you're an actor, you know, you can, you're a never do well, maybe academically or something. That's not true. Like I told you, you know, the first course I read in school is business administration. And then my second degree is in law. My master's is in international law and diplomacy. And my PFD, professional fellowship doctorate, is in economics. You know, and I read theology in a Bible school. So it makes you balanced. And come on, which role will you not pick with your fingers and just eat it like food? You know, because you have residue of knowledge. Uh, and so they, they go together very well. All right, well, let's say thank you so much. Of course, he's here also for the Peace Concert. So again, if you ever made your way, make your way right here to the Huru Gardens where we are live. We still have a lot more coming up for you. Join with is on the other side. And also on the other side is, uh, is uh, Mr. Ibu. We're going to be talking to him as well. Uh, but finally, maybe before we let you go, what is your, we know it's an election year for Kenya. What is your message of peace uh, to, uh, to the Kenyan populace? Now, 
what I want to say is this. Peace is very important because it's the prerequisite for development. President Goodluck Jonathan, the former president of Nigeria, he said something that touched my heart and keeps touching my heart. No politician's ambition is worth the blood of any citizen. And so I assert without fear of contradiction, without fear of favor, that the ambition of President Uhuru Keata, the ambition of Raila Odinga, the former Prime Minister of Kenya, the ambition of all the tribes in Kenya, name them Kikui, Lua, Lua, Kalenjin, even the Makonde, is not worth the blood of any Kenyan citizen. For crying out loud, we subscribe to democracy in Africa because it's the system that should guarantee peaceful transition of power from one person to the other. So violence has no place in democracy. And so Kenyans should understand that they are brothers and sisters. The mere fact that they are all blacks shows that they descended from a common ancestry. So if a politician tells you to kill your brother, tell the politician, no, I am my brother's keeper. I am not my brother's killer. And so we in the entertainment world has come, we in the entertainment world have come to the inevitable conclusion that without peace we cannot perform in our entertainment. Entertainment needs a peaceful atmosphere, a beautiful atmosphere. And that is why we are in the vanguard of preaching peace in Africa. Africa is the best continent in the world. It's the cradle of civilization. Now, without peace, we just cannot advance. So we are taking up the issue of peace very seriously. And we have come to preach peace. And we are telling our Kenyans, I love you so much. Your blood should not be shed for the sake of election to massage the ego of one politician who when he finishes in power they will sit together sharing the loot and you will sit together sharing the wounds you should not kill your brother for the sake of power peace is what you need what peace is what we need peace be unto you thank you very much of course we're continuing with our coverage here we're live at the huru gardens we're going to be back with some more but right now i want to toss it back over to joey on the other side and then we'll come back and have some more fun and interviews and preach peace tomorrow morning we're going to take